Hello ladies and gentlemen, Top Hat Gaming Man here and I have decided that today is finally the day that I am going to make a video talking about Super Mario Odyssey. You see, most YouTubers manage to make a video in the first couple of days because, you know, um, ad revenue, they want to talk about whatever's trending and make as much money as possible. Who doesn't? But for me personally, I like to feel that I need to play a game in depth before I should really be giving any detailed opinions about it. So I've needed a few weeks to digest the game um, and formulate my thoughts. So I thought, what better way of doing that by talking about all seven 3D Super Mario Brothers games. I thought I'd talk about all of them in detail, my experiences with them and how I would rank Odyssey amongst the other six games. So we might as well start at the very beginning. Super Mario 64, released back in 1996. I believe I actually got my copy for Christmas in um, December 1997 as uh, the system came out quite a bit later in Europe than it did in Japan as things were back in those days. But yes, that was special. That was a really, really special day playing Mario 64 for the first time. You see, I often uh, may come across like I hold different opinions to many people, but the quality of Mario 64 is certainly something I definitely agree with. The first time I played that game, it was like nothing I'd ever played before. It was just 3D and just so smooth. Even playing with the analog stick on a controller, like, I couldn't believe how well it handled. Like before playing um, any of those 3D games, I remember seeing the trailers for them with the camera angles and all stuff like that, thinking, how on earth do you even control that? That must be really difficult. Because obviously, I'd only played stuff going in a two di on two-dimensional planes. So the thought of controlling something in 3D, it just was a little bit unfathomable for my brain at the time. But anyway, Mario 64, absolutely fantastic. Like, I can remember Christmas Day of 1997 so, so clear in my mind just because of that game. Like I said, it's special. Uh, the only gripes I have a bit now is it is obviously starting to become very, very dated. It's got those horrible, ugly polygon graphics in which we had to suffer with um, now, I suppose, because at the time they didn't really do that much t harm because it was so revolutionary. But looking now, like Nintendo 64 and most um, PlayStation games, with the 3D ones at least, look, don't look quite as good as Super Nintendo or Mega Drive games, do they? So to look at Mario 64 is pretty ugly, and the controls aren't quite as good as uh, the more modern 3D Mario games. But nonetheless, it's still a classic and a lot better than anything else that was made around the same time frame. Like you play Crash or Spyro or Croc or even Tomb Raider, they're all absolutely terrible in comparison to Mario 64. It's just such a more solid um, 3D platforming game. Um, I suppose Banjo was kind of good as well. That was probably on Mario 64's level, but there wasn't anything on non-Nintendo platforms, I suppose, that was in its league. But as I said, bit dated now. So out of the seven games, I'm going to rank it right in the middle as uh, the fourth best 3D Mario game to play. Uh, but that's the best to play in 2017. I'm not talking in terms of impact because I think that game probably had more impact than any of the 3D games that have come after it. But in terms of gameplay experience now, I'm going to rank it at number four out of the seven. After that, we had Mario Sunshine, which to me felt like a huge step in the wrong direction. It was really exciting, I must say, to get another 3D Mario game after waiting, I feel, was probably about six years between those two titles. So we'd gone a long time without another 3D Mario game, so it was great to see another one, but playing it, it just didn't match up. Whilst it was very pretty to look at, the gameplay just wasn't on the same level. Like you had that horrible flood mechanic, didn't you, where Mario randomly has this jetpack so he could shoot himself up in the air and do all tricks and squirt enemies like he's some Ghostbuster with a water pistol. But overall, I really didn't like that game. It was it was more difficult than the first one, but I don't feel in a good way, in more like an I'm gonna stab you kind of way, like kind of like if you play too much Ghosts and Goblins, if you know what I mean. Not quite that bad, but it just didn't feel as good. I suppose part of the problem was um, all the levels in Mario Sunshine had the same theme, which is pretty dull. Like they were all like these tropical island paradise. Whereas the levels in Mario 64, they was a lot more varied as well. So most of Sunshine all blurs into one. And also 
apart from Mario Odyssey, because that's a much newer game than the others. But Super Mario Sunshine is the only game I haven't bothered to collect every single item in, because the game just doesn't feel worth that much amount of my time. Like I said, I just did not get as much enjoyment out of it. So round number seven, Mario Sunshine, I'm going to rank number seven. So Mario 64, number four, Mario Sunshine, number seven. The next game after that, I believe, was Super Mario Galaxy, which basically had everything right with it, what was wrong with um, Super Mario Sunshine. Mario Galaxy was bloody amazing. I, I can't really complain about it. The only thing I didn't like, I suppose, was having to use motion controls every now and again and having to use a bloody nunchuck in one hand and, um, was it nunchuck in one hand and I think the buttons you'd have to hold in the other and hold them quite far apart. That was weird, rather than using the real controller, but the actual gameplay itself, Bloody amazing. I loved the mechanic with um, the gravity and stuff where you would fly in between all those planets and it was just, it just brought something completely new to the world of 3D. Like rather than just walking on a flat plane, you would, how would you even describe it? Like you'd walk on spheres, I suppose. Yes, amazing. Like I said, it just blew my mind. It was, it was such a beautiful game and orchestral music as well. Orchestral music for the first time in a Mario game. So that made the experience feel even more epic than its predecessor. So Mario Galaxy, how will I rank that amongst all the Mario games? I'm going to put it at number two. It's going to get the number two spot on my list. See, I'm talking quite organically here. I've only partially made up my mind in my head where I'm going to put them. After that, you had Mario Galaxy 2. And I'll be honest, at the time, whilst I did really enjoy Mario Galaxy, like I said, probably one of the best um, Mario 3D Mario games of all time, at the same time, I thought, really? Why are you just releasing the same game twice? Like, that's awful and annoying when companies like Ubisoft and EA and Activision do that all the time. So it was horrible to see Nintendo are pretty much pulling the same trick. But upon playing it, apart from obviously being Mario Galaxy 2, the game actually does feel really different. You have most of the same controls and um, a lot of the same music as well, but overall it's the same experience, but a bigger, better experience. It's kind of like an expansion pack for Galaxy, I suppose, but a gigantic one. And from what I believe, I think that might have been what the plan was for it originally, but they just kept expanding it and expanding it and expanding it into the biggest and best bloody 3D Mario game of all time. So for that reason, Mario Galaxy 2 actually gets my number one spot as the best 3D Mario game that has been made to this day. It basically pulled all the best elements from Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, Mario Galaxy into one cohesive ultimate Mario game. Amazing! So after that we got Mario 3D Land on the Nintendo 3DS. When the Nintendo 3DS was in its infancy and was in desperate need of some games within its library, also, I've got to say, it was awesome to see a free, a new 3D Mario game on a portable system. That was a first. And also to see the word Mario Land brought back. Like Mario Land, Mario Land 2, Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3, all amazing games. So it kind of felt like, kind of like the carry on from that, if you know what I mean. So yes, I also liked that they really mixed up the play mechanics in that game. I believe you would collect free items on the levels, possibly stars, and make it from the beginning of a level to the end, as in you would jump on a flagpole, just like in the original classic um, Super Mario Bros. game. So I thought that was interesting to put um, 3D Mario on a track. So it was kind of like marrying up the 2D games and the 3D games into one, if you know what I'm saying. So yes, I had a lot of fun with that game, but it did feel smaller possibly than all the previous um, 3D Mario games, possibly because it was on a portable. So for that reason, I'm going to rank it at number six. Like I said, all of these games are pretty good outside of Sunshine. Not a fan of Sunshine. So I've got to play some somewhere. So I'm going to put that at number six. After that, we got... What was it? Super Mario 3D World, I believe it was called. On the Wii U. When that one was first announced, I've got to say I was, again, kind of a similar reaction I had with Mario Galaxy 2. I just thought, really, you're releasing the same game again. And like I said, I was more of a fan of the Galaxy than I was 3D Land. So I was even less impressed. And the only reason I even bought it, I suppose, apart from the fact that I buy 
most major titles um, was the fact that, again, the Wii U library at the time was absolutely tiny. So I had to play something over Christmas of that year, so I thought, why not give Mario 3D World a try? Like, how wrong was I? Like, that game is so, so ridiculously good. Personally, I think Mario 3D World is the most underrated Mario game of all time. Possibly because not that many people own Wii U's. It is so brilliant. And the final stage, which I believe was called Champions Road, which is the last item you collect was um, Champions Road, such an amazing level. Probably the best level I've uh, played in any Mario games. It's just so long and so challenging and I literally had to try the level hundreds upon hundreds of times to beat it. But what a feeling when you're dancing on the ceiling beating the final stage in Mario 3D World. But yeah, the whole thing, just such a good game. As I said, I could keep going on about it. Like there was that level, I can't remember what it was called, where you'd um, you jump on platforms in times the music was like, beep, 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 pop. You'd know what level I'm talking about if you've played the game. If not, I sound like probably some lunatic with Tourette's. But yes, um, Mario 3D World, absolutely excellent. And I'm gonna rank it as, the third best 3D Mario game of all time, just because the Galaxy games are just that level above. But if you're gonna play a Mario game today, what's 3D other than the Galaxies, go straight for Mario 3D World. So if you're good with numbers, you will know by now where I'm gonna be ranking Mario Odyssey. And that is, I believe, the fifth best um, 3D Mario game of all time. I think it surpasses Sunshine and Mario 3D Land, but I think Mario 64, um, the Mario Galaxies, and um, Mario 3D World, I got a lot more fun out of all of those. So if I had to play them all again, I would pick those four over Odyssey. So what are my gripes with Odyssey, you may ask, to place it so low? Well, firstly, as I said, they're not really gripes because these are Mario 3D games and they're bloody amazing, so I have to rank them all somewhere. But the areas in which I feel it lacked in comparison to the others was um, the collecting element. Like, I didn't think the collecting element was up to scratch on the same level as previous games. Like Because they decided to put so many of those bloody moons to collect, it just felt like they, they just chucked them around everywhere. So whenever you got one, which would be every couple of seconds, that um, little um, sensory reward system would not work in your brain the same way as it would in other games. Because, oh, another moon. 10 seconds later, oh, another moon. There would never be any like epic journey in the game where you went without a moon and then you finally got one to add to your collection like in um, those other games. So for that reason that's why one of the reasons I did not find Odyssey as stimulating. Another one I just find the actual worlds in it a bit weird. I know it's meant to be an Odyssey and there's meant to be big scenery changes but a lot of it just doesn't feel like the sort of world you'd want to be in a Mario game. It kind of feels a bit ROM hacky. Like, no, for example, if you play some crap ROM hack, um, the person who made the game will just drag random elements from another game and stick it in. That's kind of what it feels a little bit like playing Odyssey sometimes. Like, why does Mario look completely different to any of the other people in the game? I know we probably, everyone's been through this in their channels and mentioned this, but it just looks odd and strange. It doesn't just stop there either. Like, I remember fighting some gigantic dragon, what Bowser was riding, and it kind of looked like something you'd see in Skyrim, and it was Mario fighting something like that. It's just very, very odd. and. I kind of wish that basically the scenery kind of suited the Mario sprite. Do you get what I'm saying? I like my Mario games to feel like Mario games, but be introducing new stuff. Like, I would have been all fine with the city and the dragons and all stuff like that, but I wish the art style had have matched the Mario formula, if you understand where I'm coming from. But that's just a small gripe, I suppose. The moon collecting element got on my nerves a little bit more. Again, the music. Not quite up to scratch with all the other orchestral um, theme song, theme songs, orchestral, um, can't think of the word. Uh, what's the bloody word? I don't know, someone, someone tell me in the comments section, you know what I mean. Where you get lots of tracks for a game and you have the list of tracks. I can't think of the word for some reason. I'm being an absolute blivering buffoon. But yes, anyway, the music's not quite as good as in Galaxy or 3D World, I suppose. So, so yes. Um, Mario Odyssey, absolutely great game, no question about that. 
no question about that whatsoever. I just think Galaxy and 3D World offered a lot better experience and arguably even in the 64 one as well because like I said it did feel like an odyssey I suppose every time you collected a new star you don't get that experience when collecting those moods it doesn't feel like an odyssey it feels like it kind of feels like when you get achievements on an Xbox or trophies on a PlayStation 3 like there's nothing to it it just pops up and um, oh another achievement I don't deserve. That's kind of how it feels when you're playing Mario Odyssey. You're collecting all these items and you never really feel like you deserve, you should be getting them because it feels like you're just being handed them. Understand? So yes, I like Mario Odyssey just not as much as I like some other 3D Mario games. Thank you for listening to me ranking all of these games. How, this, this is an idea actually, this is what we're going to do in the comment section today. I would like each and every one of you to get the seven 3D Mario games which I've been talking about in this video and rank them yourself one to seven. And even better than that, why not list why as well? Let's compare and contrast all of our ideas and see what we come up with. Maybe in the future I'll even correlate it all in a graph so we can truly come up with um, the best 3D Mario game. Well, the best 3D Mario game, just according to my audience. Just according to my audience who bothered watching the video. Just um, the audience who watched the video and left a comment. So yes, a very accurate, um, very accurate recording there. Anyway, cheerio!